When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. I'm not worried about a thing, cause I know he is guiding me. Where you lead me, Lord, I will go. I have no fear, cause I know who's in control. There's no limit to what you can do, cause it all belongs to you. Yes, it all belongs to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When Jesus says yes, nobody, nobody, nobody can say no. I am excited about being here tonight. I uh, want to thank your pastor for inviting me. Uh, pastor Reed always says people have to be nice, but they don't have to be nice to you. So I am very appreciative of that. I thank you guys for being here, and I thank any of y'all for coming and for singing. Um, praise to the Almighty God. And I want to tell Leanne, I don't really know if that was, I don't know what kind of, what introduction, where's she going? You have to tell too much, Leanne, you tell too much. You can't tell everything. <laughs> Well, praise be unto God. Like she said, I'm under the leadership of Pastor Reginald Reed in his absence. And um, are we ready for the word? Are we ready for the word? Uh, Leanne, have I already told you, I am a very loud person. They say, you know, when I moved to any of y'all, that's when I found that out. I did not know that I was loud until I moved there, and then they, everybody said, you got a big mouth. And I was like, really? I didn't think so, but anyway, it's me. It's me. So um, I uh, have been going through lately transformation. Have anybody been in transformation period ever? You know, and, and there are some strange things that go on during transformation. And uh, I can remember, um, let's pray, let's pray. Father, we thank you, we love you, we bless your holy name. You are an awesome God. There is no one like you, God. Father, bless this church. Father, increase. Hallelujah. All of you and none of me. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Uh, I remember years ago, Ursus, you can be seated. And I, I'm going to get to the, the scripture. Was I supposed to wait? You know, I'm not traditional, so I don't know a whole lot about it. You know, was I supposed to read the scripture before the usher sat down? Anyway, let's go with it. Okay. I can remember years ago uh, when I first got into the Word. Do anybody remember when they first got into the Word, how excited you were about the Word? And I remember my former pastor, Pastor Walker, had given me a book. And... Uh, uh, it was called being a vessel. 
And uh, I was reading in the book, and uh, it says that uh, we were a vessel. We are vessels that hold God. And, you know, and the book was talking so much, and the book said something, and I was just really getting into it. And I went up to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I am your vessel. Fill me up. Oh, I was talking really good, you know, to the Lord. Y'all know how it is sometimes you just feel spiritual. You just want to say, Lord, just do it for me. And that's what I did. I said, Lord, fill me up. And the Lord said, how empty are you? Now, that really did something for me. I said, huh? I said, well, you know, I thought I was saying something real spiritual. I said, Lord, fill me up. You know how you can get spiritual. Y'all stop acting like sometimes you don't say spiritual. You know, just want to get spiritual and say something in the tongues or, you know, to the Lord. And the Lord bust you out. Bust your bubble wide open. He said, how empty are you? So I got to do it just like the Lord told me, guys. So it's a lady working in the back. Ma'am, I'm ready. I'm ready, ma'am. She's going to put something up for me. It says, am I a vessel God can pour into? A vessel is an instrument or tool used for carrying or filling. Let's go into the word. Turn to 2 Kings 4, 1 through 6. And we're going to pay close attention to something that we don't usually pay attention to. We're going to pay attention to the vessel. Now there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And I know that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditors is come to take unto him my two sons to be a bondsman. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What have thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad, all thy neighbors. Say this with me, empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all these vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. She went in from him and shut the door upon her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. We are vessels that hold God. And daily, we should ask him to fill us up. But what kind of vessel are we asking God to pour into? What kind of vessel are we asking God to pour into? Tonight, the Lord wants us to not look at our neighbor. Don't look at nobody else. This is about you and about me. And I'm going to ask the question again because somebody went way out there. I I felt it. They said, "Uh uh-huh, what kind of vessel is she? Mm -hmm, that God can pour into. I know her. I'm talking about me. What kind of vessel am I asking God? Every morning when I get up, I say, God, pour into me. But what am I presenting to him? Okay, ma'am, what is your name? This sweet lady in the back. I'm ready. This is our first vessel. Look at it. It carries something. What's wrong with it? It's dirty. It's dirty. Do we get up before God every morning like this and say, God, pour into me. Do you want anything out of it? Would you drink anything out of that? So why would you present it to God and say, hey, pour into this? Dirty. We know what dirty is. We know what dirty stuff is. I'm talking about saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost people. Getting up before the Lord every day dirty. And the Lord said, if you're a friend with the world, you're an enemy of God. 
Now, I, I, I want to stop here and tell you that I'm not trying to dump on you because I've been dirty. I know what dirty people do because I did the dirty. Okay. But we can't get before God and just give him anything. And then we say, God, I'm going to be dirty again today. We don't repent. We don't do that. We say, I'm going to get up, and this is how I'm going to get up, and I want you to fill me up. So who else would drink out of that? Raise your hand if you would drink out of that. So we want to present that to people. We stand before them dirty, but then we say we are who we are. What kind of vessel are we presenting to God? And we want him to fill it up. I'm ready, darling. I'm ready. Look at this one. It's really cute. What's wrong with it? Is there anything wrong with it? You can talk to me, guys. See, I'm a, I'm a teacher. This is what I do. Some people say it's got a scratch on it. Uh, Pastor McDowell was back there talking about this vessel earlier in teaching. This vessel already got something in it. It's full of itself. It didn't wait on God to fill it up. You got up half ready already, got your mind made up. I'm going to take care of my own self. I know how I'm going to pay my bills. I'm calling Blow Joe tonight, baby. And I know how the light bill getting paid. I already know. Hey, I know about that. Didn't I tell you I've been dirty? Okay, well, I know about getting that money. But you can't present yourself to God like that. You can't do that. And then say, Lord, fill me up. Get that spiritual in you. Fill me up, Lord. God said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. See, Saul was like that. Anybody remember Saul? Saul, God told Saul to do something. Saul did what he wanted to do. What happened to him? He lost what God wanted him to have. He proved himself a, to be a vessel full of himself. If you're full of yourself, don't ask God to do nothing. Because you the one, you know how to do it. Pastor McDowell was getting on us women back there before. We already know what to do, so why go to God? We know how to handle our marriage. Can't nobody tell us what to do. When then we go on our knees after we done tore it up and fixed it up and, and, and talked all about it and messed up, and then we said, Lord, please fix it, Jesus. You know, that's how we do it. But when you're full of yourself, do you think God wants to fill you up? Half of you and half of him? How is that? Do that sound even right? Uh, obedience. Partial obedience is total disobedience. You can't be partial obedient. Um, God always had me to tell on myself. And uh, I'm just wide open now. I said, God, you just got me wide open. You know, just tell folks my business. And uh, anyway, uh, I had a family member just a couple of years ago, and uh, she said, uh, Tanya, every month, I'm going to bless you. Oh, I looked at it as a blessing. I did. I said, Girl, thank you. She said, I'm going to buy you some groceries with an EBT card. Y'all know what an EBT card is? Come on, let's be for real. Stop looking at them. Y'all don't know what a food stamp card is. Okay, now look. Can, I, I want, look, y'all know I keep it real now. I like to keep it real. But anyway, she said, I want to bless you. So she was doing it every month. I said, Lord, thank you. So then the Lord had said to me, he said, um, not, don't, don't, don't get a, you know, no more for me to cut it off. I said, I, I don't understand. You know, I, I don't understand when, when you're being blessed. I don't, I don't quite understand that. You know, do y'all ever keep it real with the Lord about that? I said, I don't, I don't quite understand what you're trying to tell me to do. So um, I did because he said it. Not that there was nothing wrong with it. He said it, and I did it. Huh, anybody like praising God because you're finna praise right now? Hallelujah. I don't think my husband and I have spent $50 at the grocery store since. 
If it was, it was on something we wanted, just happened to go in and get. Since then, see, when God want to bless you, he want to do it how he want to do it. And then he want to see if you're going to be obedient, if you're going to be half full of yourself, and you know how to take care of what you got to do. I, Tuesday, my sister pulled up, opening her trunk. Girl, I got you some bacon and stuff. And I went to Sam. I said, God, you good. My mother-in-law, I go down there, she said, huh, here goes some money, buy y'all some groceries. Since then, we hadn't spent $50. And when it was, we wanted to do a fish fry, a barbecue, or something that God knows how to bless you. But you can't present yourself like that. You can't be half full of you and then want him to fill the rest up. Don't work like that. All right, darling, I'm ready. Oh, look at this one. Isn't it gorgeous? This one is beautiful. I call this the hypocrite vessel. Now, this thing right here, don't it look good? I mean, on Sunday, woo, don't we present that vessel like it got it going on? Oh, look at it, y'all. Look at me. Oh, cute, cute. But in the inside is hatred, jealousy. Malice, all kind of mess. All kinds of mess. In the book of Matthew, it said, these people serve me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. Far from me. If you hate this cute little lady right here, then that's you. That's you. If you can't wait to get out of service, Oh, you can talk about. This girl knows she don't let her hair go natural. Look at her head. It's nappy. I wouldn't wear that nappy stuff. That is ugly to me. I don't like that. I don't like that. Well, that's not your business. You ain't got to like. You don't have to. Now, everybody don't like that minute. I said, the Lord strips me. I've been in that vessel too. Couldn't hardly get out to church though. And I can remember one time when I was at my old church, this man told me, because, see, I had got into the Word. I had got that spiritual in me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I know the Word. I know this Word. Don't tell me because I know this Word. And he said, you don't love people like you should. Woo, I was hot. I said, what are you talking about? Well, I almost called a meeting with him and the pastor for that. I said, what are you talking about? I don't love people. You must don't see me when I come out here and work with these kids every Wednesday and Saturday and then all during the week. He said, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. You don't love people like you should. How do you know if you love people like you should? I like this. Come on, woman. come on. Well, I heard somebody heard somebody say it. Ooh, she said, when a person mistreats you and you can love them. But let me ask you this. You say, I don't care about you uh, doing that. I, I love you anyway. But in your heart, you say, that low down dirty dog. I tell you what, they better be glad I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about loving people for real. For real. We got to be stripped of this stuff, y'all. We are getting up every morning and we're asking God to fill a vessel that's dirty, that's just hatred, just a hypocrite, full of itself, and then we think he ought to do it. Not true. Not true. How do I become empty? First of all, you have to recognize. When it's me, say it's me. It's me. It's me. I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, it's me. I said, I'm dirty. 
I've been hypocritical towards people. I have hatred in my heart. I'm talking about, do y'all know who you're talking to? I'm talking to God. This is the cleaner up of anything. Anything. But see, church folks, I'm talking about us. We're going about day to day looking like that vessel on the outside, but the inside, the heart is far from me. And God says, it's time to clean it up. How empty are you? Really? First you recognize and you say, it's me. It's me. It's me. I got this going on and it's me. You don't have to tell everybody. You don't have to tell everybody about that. Now, I don't know, for some reason, I don't know why God, but he'll have me telling people. I have to tell people sometimes, but you don't have to tell everybody. Once you recognize, repent. Repent. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. And then people, do you know that our life is not our own? Do you know that the reason why we are setting up in here so that we can go out and share with other people what it is the Lord has said and what he has done in our lives. So our life is not our own. After, when you get ready to repent, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. And then people will start seeing the, what the Lord is trying to fill up inside of you. I was at Piggly Wiggly. I mean, I, I want y'all, I, I, I need to keep it real, okay? I need y'all to be able to handle it. I was at a Piggly Wiggly, and a, a, a guy, he had moved out of town, and he said, Tanya, hadn't seen you in a long time, girl. And I was in, okay, yes, hadn't seen you either. And um, he, um, you just, you've gained some weight since the last time, all this small talk. But now, you know, because I, that don't bother me because, you know, cute anyway. But anyway, so we, we go on and on. Because, see, I need y'all to get this. He and I used to get down. Do y'all understand that? Okay, don't, don't miss that part. Okay, so anyway, he said, uh, he said uh, in other words, he said, still, do you get, you know, do you get down? I said, no, don't get down no more. Now, saved, you know, I'm saved. And he said, everybody always saying that. Everybody always, everybody go to church. See, this is how Christians are presenting themselves. You're presenting yourself as a vessel. You're saying I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But then you go jump in the bed. You still get down. You can't still get down now. You can't get down. See, you, you, you're dirty. You're dirty. You dirty now. And I said, no. I, I mean, you know, I don't get down no more. He said, everybody always said that. And that lets me know that people saved, we present ourselves dirty. But anyway, uh, you know, a, a year or so passed ago, and I seen him. Of course, he checked, checked on it. You know, he checked on it. Of course, he asked him, you know, y'all seen Tanya? Do she still get down, you know? I'm sure he did. But when he saw me again, he said, Tanya, he said, you know, my mama been sick. Will you pray for her? I said, I sure will. That's because when I presented myself as a vessel, it wasn't dirty, even though it had been before. So forgive yourself and then be renewed be renewed but I want you all to know that the, the world and I'm talking about right here in our community they need us and they are not accepting no mess really not from Christians people are hard on Christians now they expect for you I mean you can't even walk and trip do nothing. They were like, uh-huh, I thought you were a Christian. You know, but we are supposed to present ourselves better than what we're doing. I'm ready, darling.
So, God wants to fill us up. But my question for you, again, is how empty are you? There's a certain thing called the overflow. So to be filled, it means to be filled that there is not enough room for anything or anyone more. If you allow God to fill you, he is such a God that there is an overflow. I'm ready, darling. He'll fill you up. He will fill you up until you begin to overflow. Overflow. And the overflow is extra. That's for you. That's that blessed in the city and blessed in the field. See, that's those groceries coming. I'm like, hey, overflow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, I got a new car and one working. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, that's overflow. When you are obedient, that's the overflow. But again, you cannot come to God any kind of way. You need to be an empty vessel. Now, I gave it to you how the Lord told me to. Sister Leanne said it. She said it already. She said she is loud, and, and I am. I am. I usually do it differently than this. But this is how the Lord said it, and it is so. I want you to be in the overflow. So recognize, repent. If you are one of those vessels, recognize as you. Repent and be refreshed. I need you to close your eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. We are your vessel. Hallelujah, Lord. Fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Till I overflow. Lift your hands to the Lord. No run over. I want to run over. Fill me up. Mm, God, thank you. Till I overflow. I want to run. Over, I want to run over. Fill me up. Thank you, Jesus. Till I overflow. I want to run over. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm going to pass it over to your pastor. Thank you, Jesus. I want to run over. Oh, fill me up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up, Lord. Stand on your feet till I overflow. Does anybody want to run over? Anybody want to run over? Hallelujah. Lord, I want to empty myself to you, God. Fill me up. Thank you, Lord.
till I overflow And I want to run on the Glory to your God Lord, we thank you Fill me up Yes, Lord Till I overflow I want to run on the Yes, God, thank you, Lord Come on, let's sing that. Fill me up. Come on, you can say that. Till I overflow. I Come on, you can do louder than that. A little football game. I dare you to tell him to fill you up. Fill me up. Till I Come on, one more time. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Oh, fill me up. Oh, to lie on the floor. I will. Come on, we ain't finished. Come on, come on. Fill me up. It's personal tonight. Oh, the floor. One more time, fill me up. No music. Fill me. One more time, that sounds so pretty. Fill me up. Nobody, Lord, but me. Last time, come on. Oh, fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to Oh, fill me up. Till I Come on. Feel, feel me up. Fly on. Hold on just a second. See, a lot of times you wait for somebody to pray for you. You waiting for somebody to lay hands on you? Sometimes you got to do like Ramama. Sometimes you got to shout it out. Sometimes you got to open up your mouth and say, Lord, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. She told you all have sinned. All have fallen short. But all you got to do is say, Lord, fill me up one more time. Lord, I know I've been dirty. Lord, I know I've been empty. Lord, fill me up. Oh, fill me up. Come on, Lord, come on. Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you're one of those filthy ones that she's been talking about. Hey, the altar is here for you tonight. Maybe you need to get cleaned up. Anybody ever played church? Maybe you're sitting out there to say, you know, I'm tired of playing it. I'm, I'm at my wit's end. She just told you how to do it. Maybe the altar is for you tonight. Maybe it's for you. Maybe you've been in church, but the church hasn't been in use. Okay, let me say that again. 
Just because you go to church does not mean you're saved. Okay. I don't, I don't care how much you attend unless God is inside of you. I wonder where you make heaven. Very quiet. Feel. Feel me up. Till I. One more time. That's the Holy Ghost. That's him asking. Feel me up. I You've been just veering for the second night. God is doing some amazing things around here. You need to get this message over and over and play it. Make it go viral. Maybe you're sitting out there and you're saying, I need to be filled up. It's simple. 1 John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It simply is what she told you tonight to do. Repent means to turn around. You don't need sugar daddy to pay your bills, baby. You got a daddy that sits high and he looks low and pay every bill that you got. You don't need that man to pay for your weave. You don't need that man to pay you no gas money. You're better than that. You're a queen. You don't have to use your body to turn around and get what you want. We got a heaven, we got a father in heaven that will love you. And he said, I'll give you anything that you want. Until next time, I'm Pastor Mac. We're going to keep praising him. I'm sorry we got to cut off right here, but hey, keep praying for us. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. We're going to keep filling them up. Until next time, I'm Pastor Mac, this is Truth Church, with the raw, real, anointed women's conference. Until tomorrow night, you be blessed. I will.